What exactly is Feet Finder and is it a scam? Mm. Now this is a series of me attempting to make money from my feet and other weird things on the internet because we all want to be accountants over here rowing in the money doing unusual jobs. So I did a part one video to like what is Feet Finder, like what's the site like, what is it about, what's the whole like mission statement and all that and I created an account with you guys to show you guys what that was like. But I decided to spend the $4.99 to find out all the questions you guys had and see what the site was really like. You know, basically I wanted to know what was the platform like in person, experiencing it for myself, all the quirks, ins and outs of it. How do you make money on it? How hard is it to make money? Like, what is the competition like? And overall, is it worth spending the money on this instead of going to a site like OnlyFans, which we've talked about before, which isn't that hard and it doesn't charge creators to have an account. And with that said, down below is the timestamps to all the different spots of the video, but I kind of recommend watching it fully through to fully understand the aspects of it. Now, I do have to warn you, I am sick. That is why this video didn't come out last week, but I'm attempting to film it right now, but I'm still definitely sick so bear with me and please 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 hit the like and subscribe button down below I do post a new video every single Wednesday unless like I said I'm deadly sick I post on every single Wednesday helping you figure out adulting well I'm attempting to figure it out myself and come on please at least hit the like button your girls out here just getting over what I believe was the flu still dying a little bit in the inside but I'm filming this because I know so many people want the part two I also have itch itchy bug bites all over my foot from watering the garden last night on my balcony and it itches. But either way, complaining aside, I know a lot of people wanted a part two. So I am coming to you with a part two and you know, I'll let you decide for yourself if you think it's worth it. But I do want to let you know I am not new to the foot world. This is not my first platform. Like I said, I have done previous videos on this topic, which goes in depth more on pricing feet content, what you should be posting, how hard is this world, where you should go, like all of the ins and outs of feet, I will link down below for my other videos. This video is not based on that, it's based on the platform. And that is what I wanna talk about first is once I got onto the site, because it does take a little bit to get ID verified. So when I did the original video, I was only basing my assumptions on what the site would be like based on like the sign up page and what other people's experiences were, but I didn't actually get to play with the site myself. Myself. So the moment I got that email saying that I was ID verified, I started playing around. And I really had a wonder in what the privacy element was going to be like. Because I knew it was going to be a search engine, which OnlyFans is not a search engine, which we talked about that in the last video, but I'll go over it briefly. Basically, Instagram, Google, they are search engines. So you're able to search things on the site in a more free way than you are able to do on OnlyFans. OnlyFans, you'd have to actually like search someone's exact username to find them like you can't search them by name or by type of content or anything like that it's not really search friendly in any way shape or form because it's not really meant to be a search engine but feet finder is meant to be one which I think will have its good and its bad side that I didn't per se realize before so one of the things I slightly question is the privacy and how private you can be on the site because some people when they go into the foot world and they want to sell feet content they want to do it in a private way because this is something that's you know a little bit seen as taboo and stuff like that and some people do it in um ways that they wouldn't want other people to find out about now i personally do mine completely pg but it's still weird to be like oh yeah i have an only fans it's of my feet and they're just like wait you have an only fans and their judgment's already there and then you add the part of feet and they're like well like is it real like feet and they, i don't know there's just a lot of assumptions that go along with it so the one thing about feet finder is they do have a seller section on their website where you don't even have to make an account to view all of the sellers on the website and search what sellers are there and not there. That part I don't really like. Like I wouldn't mind it as much as if, you know, you had to have an account first. Like you at least had to put your information in and verify who you are before you're on there just searching people up. Because I don't like the idea that someone could be not interested in feed at all and just decide to go ahead and expose all these people that have sellers accounts because they can. They don't even need to make an account. 
Like, they don't have to put any work in. They could just go to feetfinder.com, search sellers, and see everybody. And they also can see a little bit of what the account is like because it's not completely private. So with OnlyFans, if you have like a monthly subscription service, a lot of it's like more like blurred out and you can't really see stuff as much. Like you can see like the text in a post, but you can't see any kind of what the images are like. But on Feet Finder, everything is censored, but not completely blacked out. It's like blurred, but you can still kind of see it. So again, it's just all these things where I don't know how I would feel about my information being so public out there. There's no such thing as like a private Instagram account that's not searchable on Feet Finder. It's all just public and viewable for the most part. Like, yeah, your content's blurred, but I don't know. I don't really like that. Yes, you could do it more anonymously and hide it that way. I just don't per se like that you can go on the site and see every single one of the sellers. I guess it makes buyers feel better because they can know who's on the site, but I don't really like that part. But I know technically it's not that big of a deal and that's how a lot of sites perform. And also it gives a chance of being discovered because the fact that it is a search engine, you can search people's, you know, names and it doesn't have to be the exact username and they could find you and they could search the types of content. You can actually tag your content with the type that you want. So that is good. And I did play with it a little bit on the site. Like when you create a post to post on your page, you get this giant list, like giant list to select from on like a type it could be, whether it is you know, licking, arches, toes. There's a five gazillion things on there that go way more in depth than I have ever even gone in that world. But it does give you a chance of being discovered. It's just the things you can't do on the site that you can do on, you know, OnlyFans is you're actually not allowed to do any nudity. So I keep mine like PG, like there's none of that on my site. But if that's something you're interested in doing, that's also something that usually makes a lot more money. You can't technically do that on Feet Finder because they don't have the right um, I don't know how you say it like they can't charge from the credit card companies if they have nudity on their site only fans found ways to do it and stuff but feet finder has not found a way to do it yet they're hoping to be able to down the road be able to have content on there that's nudity but currently you're not supposed to it's definitely happening but you're not supposed to and also oddly enough you're not supposed to be having more than one person in your photo like that's also not allowed right now which again i think it goes back to like what they're allowed to have on their site and what they're not allowed to have on their site so it's like nudity and more than one person in a photo are not allowed yet but you can do that in OnlyFans. so if you think that's too much of a limitation for you then I'd recommend just going straight over to OnlyFans and not worrying about this at all. And then one of the other things is you can't fully block out any of your content, none of it. You have no choice. Everything is going to be blurred if you want it on the site. So, you know, be ready to have at least blurred content. Some of it does seem like it's blurred out pretty heavily, but it's also something just to keep yourself aware of. And it very much just reminds me overall of a crude Instagram like the platform does because think about it it's like no nudity but it kind of happens things are more public and searchable and i don't know it just again it reminds me of a, like instagram when it was first coming out so i definitely think it could blow up but it does have some sketchy parts of like the way the site works like sometimes it'll bounce you to places that it's not supposed to or it's not really working right it's not really user friendly you can't really do things that it says you can do like it just doesn't work that well and i also found it very sketchy that when i was starting to take down my account and be like, um, maybe I'll give this a little bit longer of a shot, but I won't do monthly subscriptions. I'll just do pay to view content. And when I went to go take down the option to subscribe to my Feet Finder account, it said I was blocked. Like a little thing popped up and said, sorry, you're blocked because basically it thinks I'm doing something I shouldn't be on the site because I wanted to take off my monthly subscription. And thank God I was able to go back on the platform and take down my account and all my information fully because I was blocked, but it didn't take my account down. So like stuff was still there and I had a risk of not being able to take down my information and still have that up there even though I didn't want to have an account anymore. I wasn't even sure if it was still going to charge me or not. And it's just overall the site seems very... Mm. Now, site aside, because I get it, it's a newer site. It's not going to be the best platform in the world. I can't be so nitpicky. Like, there's plenty of things about OnlyFans platform that I also don't like and doesn't work exactly right. So let's talk about the more important thing. How is the money? Because we're all doing this for the money and me for YouTube videos and helping you guys out. But in general, it's like we're not doing this for free out here, though for the most part we are because... 
m most ads go to YouTube. And, and I don't have that many subscribers. But hello, all the people that are there. I appreciate you. But either way, how is the money on the site? So I talked about it a little bit in the first video and a little bit in the beginning of this video, like what type of content you can have. So there is basically three methods of making money on the site. You can have a monthly subscription where they can subscribe to see everything on your account. You can't pick and choose, which I was really hoping they would give that option where some stuff is only for monthly subscribers, some stuff is only for pay to view, and like some stuff mixes over, but they did not do that. It's just basically, you can do both on the site, but it's basically all or nothing. And so what they can do is they can pay to subscribe and see all of the content or they can pay to see individual things. But everything on there that's individual is part of the monthly and you know, vi vice versa. But either way, it's not the biggest deal, but that's two ways to make money. People can subscribe and see everything or you can sell stuff individually. And some people will want to buy stuff individually, but unless your monthly fee is really high, you're not going to make that much on individual content because it's like, why would someone pay $20 to see this one photo or they can pay $10 a month to see everything. So you can't really make as much money on individual content, which can be, you know, pretty helpful. And there's also ways to make money by people have to be like subscribe to you to message you and all these other features. But for the most part, the main ways of making money is people subscribe to you monthly or you turn off that feature and people are buying individual content on a regular basis. So the one thing is they will charge a fee for every transaction that happens. They take a percentage just like OnlyFans. <laughs> I told you guys I'm sick. I'm trying not to cough too much. Okay, but either way, they too take a percentage of whatever you make, just like OnlyFans does, and it's the same amount, so that's not that big of a deal. It's kind of just more of a big deal that on top of them doing that, you still have to pay the $4.99 a month, or you can pay a little bit less to have like a year subscription, but I wouldn't per se recommend it because, yes, I think there are ways of making money on the site. There clearly are. You can clearly list stuff to sell stuff, but it's also like if you start selling your one individual product on walmart.com, it's going to be very hard for someone to find you when there's 5 billion other people and 5 billion other products on there. And it's just like, mm, there's little me. And it's like, yeah, it's possible. Like you could become a new Amazon seller and make millions of dollars, but it's not completely likely. In most cases, people don't actually make that much money doing it because there's too much competition, which goes back to the first original question I had was how is the competition? I think there are way too many sellers on the site for the amount of buyers. Yes, there are a good amount of buyers, but a good amount of them are not active, have not been on for a while, don't actually buy any content and I also think they're proof in the pudding is that the saying I don't remember how that saying goes but either way I think that them deciding to charge creators is proof that there is not enough transactions happening on the site they say they charge creators or charge people that want to like sell content on there to make sure they're serious but I don't think that's actually why I think they weren't making enough money from the individual transactions because I don't think there actually is enough transactions happening on the site. They weren't making enough money so they started charging you to create an account so they can make a little bit of their money back and make a little money for having the site up. I don't, I don't think you would be doing that with no additional perks really if you were, you know, if you're making money in other ways. They're doing this because they're not making money in other ways and there's not enough transactions happening. But that aside, that is my opinion. I don't have proof of it. Other than the fact that when I went on this site, it does seem like a lot of the buyers are not active. A lot of the accounts are only up for a temporary amount of times. Like they only use it for a temporary amount of time. Like they make an account, they don't come back to it. They make an account, don't come back to it. And like that's how a lot of these people are. They go on the account for a little bit. Maybe they buy like one person's picture and that's it. And then there's plenty of sellers. There's so many, like the seller page goes on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, not all of them are active either, but you could still buy their content even if they're not active. So it's still competition. So I just don't think it's at the point really right now that you're going to likely be discovered as we talked about or make any money at it because there's just not enough people on the site. I do think the concept wise that it is a great concept. I just don't think it's there yet. I think the potential is there if they put more money and effort into, you know, advertising who they are and what the platform's for, and they just, you know, it's used more, but I don't think they're doing that right now. I think they're just focusing on basically getting the $4.99 a month from you, and that's it. Like, it doesn't really seem like there's any more push for anything else, but concept-wise, Again, I think it was a great idea, but right now, 
Is it worth giving your private information and paying the $4.99 a month? I think no. Unless you want to experiment and try it out like I did for a video or try it out just in general to see it, then sure, go right ahead. But I don't think it's worth it money-wise and logistics-wise to do it. Like, yes, again, in theory, the site is great. It's a search engine. You can tag your content. Someone could search feet and find them. Someone could search souls or high arches and find you, like found, find your type of content. OnlyFans, you can't do that. Someone can't search feet and find my account. They can't search, you know, Red's heads and find me. That's not how the site works. So... Concept wise, yes, execution wise, and where it's at right now, no. The site is too crude. I also think it'd be way too easy to hack the site and get people's information, get people's content. I definitely don't feel like, I didn't feel like it was safe and secure. Like, yeah, I felt like maybe my credit card information or my ID, my um, bank account, like that information would be safe. But I don't think your actual content would be safe because it just seems way too crude of a site, way too easy to hack, not very private. And there were just some sketchy things that happened when I was on the site with like failed pages and all that other different stuff. Now with all that said, I don't completely give up on the idea of Feet Finder because again, concept, 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 concept. I think it is great and could do really well. They just aren't putting the money into growing it and getting more, you know, buyers on there and they're charging creators. Which I just don't think is the method. I don't. I really don't think it's the method, but maybe they give it for free for bigger names or something. But overall, I don't like how they're attempting to start off in the beginning. It's just, it's not a good way of doing it and they don't have enough buyers on there right now and things are just too crude for me to really think it's worth it for you. So overall, I think if you're just starting out, go on OnlyFans, watch my other videos on what OnlyFans is like, how to price content, what content to put up, all that information is in the other videos, so I will link it down below. But for right now, I don't think Feet Finder is it. I'm not going to completely give up. Maybe we will do a part three a long time from now when the site either grows or doesn't or will decide a year from now if the site has grown enough to be worth it. I am not against giving it another shot, but as of right now, I just think it was one of those silly TikToks where people were getting paid to make a TikTok and talk about Feet Finder. So with that said, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe button down below. I will see you guys next Wednesday and the Feet series is not over. Just because we're not doing Feet Finder right now does not mean I will not give you guys an OnlyFans and Instagram update. So stay tuned and check out my other videos that will help you figure out adulting while I'm attempting to figure it out myself. Have a great rest of your morning, evening, night, whatever it is for you. I'll see you Wednesday.